Today I want to talk to you about hell on earth. Hell on earth. And I know it sounds uh, kind of strong, uh, but when you finish reading and studying with me, I'm telling you folks, that's exactly what it's going to be like. And that's what the Lord told me I needed to use for a title. If you have a bulletin and you want to follow along with us and you like to take notes, there's an outline in your bulletin. Uh, four points today. Number one, the pit unlocked. The pit unlocked. Number two, the power unleashed. The power unleashed. Number three, the appearance unveiled. The appearance unveiled. And number four, the prince unmasked. The prince unmasked. You know, Satan is, and his demons have been attacking the human race since the beginning of time. Adam and Eve and then Cain were the first victims. Earth has been a battleground of demonic forces that want to destroy mankind. Satan harasses Christian believers all through the world and all through the Word of God. Nowadays, the New Testament church is being attacked and it will only get worse over time. The destruction caused by the first four trumpet judgments were devastating, but the remaining three judgments will be far worse. They are called the three woes. And the gospel message will give people one last time to repent and come to Christ. There is a time when God says, enough, I am done, your fate is sealed. While the judgment, uh, judgment attacks uh, the physical world, God is always dealing with mankind in the spiritual world. Let's look at the three woes from heaven's point of view. And just remember, the fifth trumpet is the first woe. The sixth trumpet is the second, and the seventh trumpet will be the third woe that was spoken of at the end of chapter 8. Revelation 9.1, Then the fifth angel sounded. And you have to understand, uh, God is the one in control of this, all right? Jesus is the one in control of the sounding. They give the signal. You have to understand the sovereignty of God. No matter what happens, God is aware of it and God is in control. There is no greater power than the power of God. And I saw a star fallen from heaven to the earth. And to him was giving the key to the bottomless pit. And when we see a star here, I truly believe, and most of the writers agree, that this is Satan. And it, you know, it has to do with his beginning. And I want you to look first in Isaiah chapter 14 with me. Some of you know, may not be aware of how he got here and what was going on. If you'll look at Isaiah chapter 4, I mean, yeah, Isaiah 14, 12. And it's called, if, you're, if you look at the top of that scripture, the fall of Lucifer. Oh, how you are fallen from heaven, O oh Lucifer. And Lucifer literally means morning star. And you have to understand, Jesus is the bright and morning star. Son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart... And folks, here is the issue. If you look down through here, five times the word I is used. The word I is used. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit in the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend from above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. And what did this Lucifer, and actually he was an angel, an angel in heaven, and his duty you'll see here in just a second, he was in, in charge of worship in heaven. But yet, instead of you know coming under the authority of God and realizing that God is con in control of all things, he wanted to be worshipped. He wanted to take God's place. And I got news for him, folks. Nobody takes God's place. God is in control. And so this disobedient, this disobedient angel was tossed out of heaven. 
And if you look at Revelation 12 sometime, uh, one third of the angelic beings followed him. And now Lucifer is called Satan or the devil here on earth. And the demons are that one third of the angels. And let me tell you something, folks. If you don't believe in demons, you are blind to the truth of the word of God. They're real. Satan hates you. He wants to attack you. He wants to make your life miserable. He wants you to, uh, you know, just be depressed all the time and woe is me. And folks, I'm telling you, he is alive and well in all the acts. When somebody murders someone, I'm telling you, he talked them into that. Murder is from the devil. Hate is from the devil. Getting even is from the devil. And that's why our world is messed up. And in my opinion, it's because Satan knows his time is short. Satan realizes if he's going to do anything, he's got to do it now. And folks, I'm telling you, as a minister of the gospel, Satan is real. He likes to hassle preachers. I am not kidding. I have a, a target on me because I preach the truth of the word. But I got news for Satan. He will lose. He will lose and God will prevail. Verse 15, and you shall be brought down to Shiloh, Shiloh to the lowest depths of the pit. And we know that is the world of the dead for the lost. Then look in Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28. This speaks of Satan also. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, take up lament uh, for the king of Tyre and say to him, Thus saith the Lord, you were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. And folks, I am telling you, you can't judge a book by its cover. All right, Satan is out there. Satan wants to infiltrate the church. False pr prophets and false teachers were around in Jesus' days. And I'm telling you, he is still using mankind. You were in Eden in the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the uh, onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the turquoise, and the emerald with gold. The work, workmanship of your timbrels and pipes. Okay, there's that music part of that. Was prepared for you on the day you were created. And you were anointed you were the anointed cherub, the angel. That's what a cherub is who covers you. I establish you. You are on the holy mountain of God. And you have to realize there are people that says, well, God created uh, Satan. Well, folks, he created Lucifer to lead out in worship, but he had the freedom of choice and he chose to go his own way. And that's what people do now. Folks, everybody has a choice. You don't have to follow God. But I'm telling you, if you don't, you have made a bad choice. You walk back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. You were perfect. Notice twice he is talking about perfection in your ways. From the day you were created, here's the verse, till iniquity was found in you. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within, and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God. And I will, and I destroyed you, O covering of cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. So when it says a star has fallen from heaven, and again, this has happened much before uh, Jesus' time. I don't know exactly. There's all kinds of theories of when this has happened, but I, I, I truly believe it probably happened even before of mankind. So we see in verse 1 the star fallen. We see the keys was given to him uh, to, to the bottomless pit. And again that is the abyss. The abyss. And look at verse 2. And he opened the bottomless pit and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke from the pit. And folks, I am telling you, uh, you know, uh, when these things happen, when, when God allows these to happen, 
He is using evil, all right, to fight evil. And that's what he is doing. And I know for some people that doesn't make sense. But you think about Pharaoh back in the days of the plagues and all that was going on. He was the ruler of the world, but he ruled in an evil way. And God was in control of him. You think of Adam and Eve and you think of Cain. All right? And if you read Genesis uh, chapter 4, you will see that Cain uh, uh, ran from God and Cain, uh, you know, was making his own way because he killed uh, his brother and he was lost. He didn't know Christ. And even at that, God marked him and said, you will not kill him. You will not kill him because he is going to pay for his sin while he was here on earth. So the bottom line is, folks, God is in control and the pit is a prison made mostly for these falling demons, all right, that have done uh, the work of Satan. So we see the pit unlocked. The second thing I want you to see, the power unleashed. Look at verse 3. Then out of the smoke, locusts came upon the earth. And we have seen locusts before. In the plagues, it was the eighth plague. And folks, locusts being around long, long enough, I'm telling you, they destroy crops. Absolutely destroy. I've seen pictures of fields where, where just stems are laying down where locusts have swept through and destroyed things. And it says, and to them was given the power as scorpions of the earth have power. And if you think about it and you think of these locusts, the locusts are in, in my driveway right now. They die every night, I've noticed, because there's one in my driveway. They're about this big. So what I'm trying to tell you is these aren't just normal locusts. When you walk down here and we walk down through the Scripture together, you would realize it's much bigger. It's more violent. Uh, all these things uh, will attack mankind. See, if you think of the first four trumpets, it, it attacked earth. Okay, it attacked earth. But now these will all attack mankind. And I'll tell you why in just a few minutes. And to them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. Folks, if you have been bit by a scorpion, you will know it. Okay, there's not one of those, well, I think something bit me. It is, I'm told, and everything I've read, is it's excruciating pain. It can even cause convulsions. And in the normal scorpion, they have those that have much more venom. There's all kinds of species of the scorpions. And some of them will kill on contact as soon as they're bit. But here, uh, he is simply saying it is a locust type scorpion. Verse 4, and they were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. So what is he saying? He is saying you attack people that have rejected Christ, that have rejected God. And folks, they've had so many chances before. Think in the first part. We're talking about earthquakes. All right? We're talking about famine. We're talking about all these things that have attacked the earth. And yet, they just go through life and they're just going through the tribulation as if nothing happened. You would think of the, th the things that were happening that people would wake up. And folks, even today, I'm telling you, there are people all over this world that ignore the signs of God. They ignore what is truly happening. And just like this week, we're talking about temperatures 106, 108, and possibly 110 degrees. Folks, the normal weather things are going crazy right now. Things are happening on earth, but yet there are still people that have seen true acts of God and still shake their fist in the face of God. And that's why when we come to the three woes, 
God is fed up. You have rejected Christ. They have rejected God and they said, now you are going to pay. Folks, I am telling you, there is always a price to pay for sin. Always. And that is what's happening. God lets these turn loose. God gives them the keys. Jesus does. And I'm telling you, they unlock the pit and here comes these huge beasts. I don't want to even say locusts. They were beasts, as you will see in a minute. And it says, uh, uh, who, who, you know, attack the ones who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. And they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days, the men will seek death and not find it. They will desire to die and death will flee from them. Folks, I'm talking about being bitten more than one time. I'm talking about for five months this is going on. And you think about that. If you read the, the thing of Noah in, in the flood, all right, water was on the earth for five months. When you think about a regular locust, they start coming in May and you still see some in September. That is five months. And when we think of plagues and locusts in that way, all right, they can destroy things. But these locusts, these, these creatures are, are much more vile. They are hate. Uh, but, and they will sting everybody that is not saved. Matter of fact, uh, hold your finger there and go to Exodus 12 with me. I want you to see one of the first markings. Exodus 12, when God marks out His people. Exodus 12, verse 21. And you see here the Passover is instituted. Then Moses, verse 21, called uh, for all the elders of Israel and said to them, Pick out and take lands for yourselves according to your families and kill the Passover lamb. We spoke of that last week in the Lord's Supper. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out that door uh, of his house until morning. For the Lord will pass through and strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on, uh, on the lintel and on the two door pass, the Lord will pass over the door and not allow the historials to come into your house to strike you. God had already marked out 144,000 uh, Jewish evangelists. They had already preached the gospel of Christ. There had already been many, many saved in that. And so those people, those Christians who were here on earth in the second half of the tribulation, they were protected by God. And everybody else, I am telling you, these horde of de demons would come and they will sting you. And I'm telling you, you are going to wish you were dead, says the Word of God. One of the hardest things I've ever watched is my mom, she had cancer, and it was not a good kind of cancer. In the last two months, she suffered greatly. And my mom said to me, and I was traveling back and forth, and I'm so glad the church let me go <laughs> every other week to see my mom. And when it got to the last part, the last month, Every time I was fixed to leave, my mom would say, Mike, please pray that I die before you get back. Folks, that is what suffering is. That is what suffering is. Folks, you will want to die. The pain is so great, you wished you could die, but you can't. Folks, I'm telling you, when the power of hell is unleashed, it is taking no prisoners. And God marked and God knows who is saved and who isn't. And this time of tribulation is going to be hell on earth. So we see the pit unlocked. We see the power unleashed. And we see the appearance unveiled. 
Look at verse 7 with me. And the shape of the locust was like horses prepared for battle. Okay, we're not talking these little locusts that fly around your house or in the trees. And they do make a lot of noise. You've got you to gotta understand when they're all doing it together, you know they are there. But these are huge horse-like figures. And it says, on their heads were crowns of something like. Remember, through here and through these, you will see something like seven times. Which means it's not necessarily literal crowns. But crowns are for victors. And I got news for you folks. Nobody is going to destroy these locusts or these, these demons. All right? Because they are under protection of God because that God used them to chastise and to judge mankind. It says, on their head were crowns of something like gold. Their faces was like the faces of men. They had hair like women's hair. And their teeth were like lion's teeth. We're talking fierce. All right? We're talking scary. We're talking something that would give kids nightmares. Then verse 9, and they had a breastplate like the breastplate of iron, which means protecting their vital organs. And the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots with many horses running into battle. And folks, if you've ever been around a herd of horses or some herd running, you hear them. If they're close enough, you will feel the ground shaking. So it's not going to be a matter of I wonder if they are here, if they're coming. You will know the swarm is coming after you. And they had tails like scorpions. And there were stings in their tails. And their power was to hurt men for five months. Oh, folks, you have to realize it's going to be, it's going to be such a terrible, terrible time. That's why the first half is called the tribulation. The second half is called the great tribulation you cannot run you cannot hide you cannot get in a cave far enough god knows you god knows where you are god knows all these things going on and i'm telling you folks it's going to be a terrible time look at revelation 20 with me revelation 20 then i saw an angel coming down from heaven having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand and he laid hold uh, of the and, and he laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. That will happen at the right, at the end of the tribulation. So he will be bound. He is loosed right now. Matter of fact, Ephesians two tells us he is the prince and the power of the air. And it says, and he will be cast into the bottomless pit and shut him up and a seal set on him so that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. So we can see, folks, God controls all things. He is in control. It is going to happen. His timing is right. So the last we see the appearance. I want you to see the prince unmasked in verse 11. And they, had at, and they had as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrews is Abaddon, but in Greek he has a name called Apollyon. So we see the two different languages there meeting, meaning the same thing. He is called the destroyer the destroyer. And you have to understand, uh, you know, when we look at the king, and, and here's, again, this is, this is my opinion, uh, the commentaries that I read, uh, they were split about half and half. Some of them thought that it was Satan being let out of the pit. But folks, that to me it cannot be true because he, he'll be here on earth, Okay. Later on, he'll be pinned up right before the tribulation period. But he, this would be, and that's why I use the word prince here instead of a king. And I'm not trying to rewrite anything, folks. I'm simply saying he will be the lead of this group that will be loosed from hell. He will be uh, uh, the leader. 
Okay, and he will be used. And he will, and, and the thing you have to understand about demons, folks, I'm telling you, they have strategies. All right? He tells, he tells them, this, this prince will tell them where to go and will tell them what to do. Satan is overall, and I don't even like the word king, okay? But it's not a capital K in there, okay? It's a small king, all right? Which means, truthfully, Satan is the king of all the demonic forces. And this guy is the leader of this pack that comes out of the, out of the pit. And then it says, one woe is past. Behold, still, still two more woes are coming after these things. And folks, I am telling you, uh, you know, when you see what happens here, and the whole thing is, folks, it happens for five, five months. That's a long time to bear anything. And let me tell you, folks, if you you know, survive the first half of the tribulation and you get to this point in the, you know, history and in life and in, in, in all this that is going on, the smartest thing you would do is the gospel is going to be shared one last time is to give your heart and your life to Jesus Christ. It is the only hope you have. Folks, Jesus is the answer. Second Peter said he is not willing for any to perish, but that all will come to repentance. But all is not coming to repentance. And if you and, and I, I really do, folks, I hope you, you figure it out way before that. If I was lost and the rapture occurred and all this chaos was going on. I am telling you right then would be the time that I would say, you know what they preached? You know what I heard? It's the truth. And I would fall down on my face and I would invite Jesus to come into my life and to save my soul. Folks, it's going to be hell on earth and you do not want to be any part of that. Ephesians chapter 6. Go with me to Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6, verse 10. Folks, I am telling you, demonic forces are real. Satan is real. There are some times, I kid you not, on Saturday night, I think he's sitting or standing in my bedroom. There are times I'll get a half a night of sleep and then from about four on, this battle is going on. And I'm not asking for sympathy. I'm asking for prayer. It's real. He is real. And the reason he is after us, folks, is because we are following the word of God and we are standing for truth. So it's real. It's real. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord in the power of His might. Okay, there's no power greater than God. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to, to stand against the wiles of the devil. That's the schemes. That's the plan of the devil. And folks, you need to understand this verse. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. See, you think your boss is the problem. You think some crazy neighbor is your problem. Even husband and wife sometimes will blame each other. She's the problem or he's the problem. No, folks, it is Satan stirring up the pot. It is Satan influencing even Christians. Okay? He cannot possess a Christian because God Almighty through the Holy Spirit is inside of you. But I'm telling you, He can talk to you. He can whisper things into your ear. He can help you justify things that are wrong and the Bible teaches it is wrong, but you justify it in your own mind. 
So the battle is real. Satan is real. And I've told you, I don't know how many times I've told you, in my closet where I pick out my suits, I pick them out. I pick them out in the mornings. And Lori okays them whether I do or not. I got an okay today. Last week, uh, no, honey, that's not going to work. And then she goes through my ties and gets them for me. But right eye level in my closet every day, I wrote down, and I can just quote them now, but that armor, which is, starts in verse 14, I am putting on the belt of truth today. I'm putting on the breastplate of righteousness today. My feet are shod with the gospel of peace today. I have my shield of faith today. I have my sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God today. And I'm telling you, and my last deal is, in God, you take care of my back. Every day, every day, every day, put on the armor of God. Then John chapter 10, and I close with this. John 10. John 10, verse 7. And Jesus said it to them. Notice that word again. Folks, God spoke to you many times. God has spoken to you many times. And folks, you are not smart. You, you are not wise if you don't listen to the voice of of God. He kept telling the scribes and Pharisees over and over again, you must be born again. You must have faith. You must believe that I am the Messiah, the Son of God. But they kept ignoring him and kept ignoring him. There was such hate in their hearts that they crucified a perfect, innocent man. Jesus said to them again, most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. One of the things and illustrations I love to use is when they'd have a city square and they'd put all the sheep in together. And you think, how in the world would each shepherd know who their sheep are? But do you know how they got their sheep out of there? They just started talking. Why? Because that shepherd was with, that sh with those sheep so many times. That shepherd found them green pastures. That shepherd got them out of creeks and got them out of danger and protected them from uh, lions and all the things that could destroy them. And so they just started talking and walking through that door. And those sheep, the, just the sheep of that shepherd would go out that door. My question to you today, do you know God's voice? Are you listening to the voice of God? Are you following Jesus Christ? Folks, it's so important, so important that you do this. And then verse 10, And the thief, talking about Satan, does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy oh folks he wants to steal your peace god gives us peace god is and jesus is the prince of peace but satan wants to steal your peace he wants to kill your joy i believe with all my heart christians ought to be the happiest people on the face of this earth and it's not just happiness on happenstance it's the joy of the lord is my strength and Satan does not want you to have joy. And he wants to destroy your testimony. Just destroy. It just takes one fit of rage around people. And I think the, the thing and the question that always just goes in my head that I've heard more than one time in my lifetime when somebody does something seriously wrong and the person says, I thought you were a Christian. Oh man, that cuts my heart. Cuts my heart. And then it says, I, this is Jesus, have come that you may have life and may have it more abundantly. Oh folks, Jesus is the answer. 
Jesus gives us peace. Jesus gives us joy. Jesus gives us a testimony. Are you walking in peace today? Do you truly have the joy of the Lord in your life? Is the Holy Spirit speaking to you today, folks? I am telling you, it is going to get bad. Hell on earth during the great tribulation. My prayer, if you're not sure today, that you would make sure that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Father, thank you for this day. God, I thank you for your word. Just as your word said today, you've given folks chance after chance after chance. God, there's some people, and there could be one here also that is just, they've heard the gospel a hundred or two hundred times, but they just have not said yes to you and yes to salvation. God, I pray today would be their day of salvation. God, thank you for your word. And God, I just know during the great tribulation, it's going to be a horrible time. And God, I pray nobody leaves here lost today. I pray that your Holy Spirit would just convict the lost and convict the Christians that we need to live a life that is pleasing to God. God, thank you for the Holy Spirit that is our guide. Thank you for sealing us with your seal. Thank you for writing our name in the palm of your hand. Thank you for knowing us, every hair, the number of hairs on our head. And God, I pray this week as we go out, we will truly be Christian ambassadors for you. God, this is your invitation. This is your time. So God, I pray you use it for your honor and your glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come?